My name is Cecilia Linde. I'm a professor at the Karolinska University Hospital and Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, Sweden. Well, the background is that not all patients are indicated with cardiac resynchronization therapy. So if you're a heart failure patient, 30% will have broad QRS and might be in indicated. But the rest who do not improve sufficiently for heart medication uh, actually have an alternative, and that's cardiac contractility modulation. So cardiac contractility modulation looks like a pacemaker, but it's not, because it delivers stimulatory signals to the ventricular septum, which does not uh, lead to a pace beat, but does increase contractility. So um, that has been shown to be a valuable therapy in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Uh, and now uh, we studied in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Well, the design was a pilot study, which is open. The patients are aware that they got the device. They are aware that they received therapy. Uh, and it was a multi-center study because we wanted to have a larger group of patients than just a few. Uh, and it was a six-month study. Uh, the patient population were half, half patients with or without atrial fibrillation because atrial fibrillation is quite common in MHFF. They had to be symptomatic. They had to have core evaluation of structural uh, parameters indicative of diastolic dysfunction, and they had to have elevated anti probnp Yes, it is a device that gives uh, electrical therapy, uh, which is sensed by the patient, and it has to be delivered seven hours per day to be efficient. Uh, and uh, it, it has conventional ventricular leads, so no special equipment but a special device attached to it. And it's complementary to medical therapy, so if you respond, you can also envision that patients can tolerate a higher dose of medication than they would otherwise. Well, we had uh, the Kansas City Cardiomyopathy Quality of Life score as the primary endpoint together with the safety endpoint. And what we showed was that in those patients after six months compared to baseline, there was a 18 point increment in quality of life, which was statistically significant. And this was below, be, beyond what we had anticipated. We calculated 12.5 points. So this was a really uh, a significant finding. And what is also important about this that, uh, it is that the magnitude of change was so great that it cannot only, in our minds, be interpreted as a placebo effect but it is a treatment effect, a top of the placebo effect, and that is a good sign that this may be a therapy to be further studied. Now we have to leave the half ref population because they need further studies, and we go into half ref uh, Ejection fraction be uh, between 25 and 45 percent, and then to be moderately severe symptoms, that is on the same level as somebody that you would assess for potential cardiac resynchronization therapy, but the patient has to have small uh, normal QRS duration below 130 milliseconds to be eligible. Well, so for the CCM HEF study that we did see improvements in quality of life, we did see some structural improvements in diastolic function, and importantly, we saw some improvement in functional class and less need for heart failure uh, uh, hospitalization. So, the key message is good science, but needs corroboration in a randomized controlled trial. The next step is already ongoing, is the AIM HIRE trial uh, taking place in the United States. Uh, this is a sham controlled trial in which of, uh, uh, one third of the patients uh, get an, uh, no device. So that means that there is a primary endpoint combination of quality of life and six minute walk but there's also 18 month uh, endpoint which covers morbidity, mortality and quality of life as a combined endpoint. So there we'll see if the population with an ejection fraction in between 40 and 60 that is basically covered a, a big proportion of the half uh, cohort if they can benefit from CCM in a randomized sham controlled trial.